Hey, how are ya? We're doing another video with our MS-DOS Time Machine. This time we're looking at the PC speaker sound. Instead of outputting it through the built-in speaker in the case, I will show you how you can build a cable and route it through your sound card so that the PC speaker sound comes out through your main speakers. Here we have an older slot one motherboard and this is the front panel connector. Here goes the power button, reset button, hard drive activity LED and also the good old PC speaker. Most MS-DOS games do support sound cards but there are also many games that only support the good old PC speaker like Space Quest, uh, Xenon 2 or Maniac Mansion. And the way they sound depend on a lot of factors. What type of speaker do you have? Most period correct retro PCs have a proper speaker like this and yeah, it connects directly to the main port onto the four pin PC speaker header. It also depends on the case, the volume, so the acoustics depend on a lot of factors. And if you have a more modern case or maybe a thin client, you might have one of these beepers. This is a Sound Blaster AW64 Gold. And if you look carefully, there is a little header here and it's labeled PC speaker. This is a input and it lets you connect the PC speaker output from the main board to the sound card. Under no circumstances should you route the PC speaker signal through the CD audio inputs. Only use the dedicated PC speaker header on your sound card. So we need to make ourselves a cable and I recommend you buy one of these. This is called a DuPont uh, kit with various plugs. And we need a two pin wire and you can buy these bulk for Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. I will put links to these items down below in the video description. We remove the existing connectors on the cable and to do that you need something sharp and just lift open that plastic hook and then you can pull the connector off the cable. On the side that connects to the main board, we use a four pin connector and we insert the wires into the two uh, outermost pins. And on the side that goes into the sound card, we just need a two pin connector. To get the cabling right without any guesswork, I looked at the manual and we can see here pin 19 is speaker power and pin 22 is the speaker signal. In the Creative Labs user manual, we can see that pin 1 connects to the PC speaker power on the main board, whereas pin 2 connects to the PC speaker signal on the main board. And now that we know the correct polarity, or cable orientation. We connect the PC speaker output on the motherboard with the PC speaker input on the sound card. We are almost done. Now we just need to configure the mixer of the sound card and unmute the PC speaker. I recommend moving it to around 50% and we are good to go. And now let's listen to a few games. First up we have Space Quest. And another game is Maniac Mansion. And a very interesting game is Sega's Golden Axe. On the PC it uses FM for music but the sound effects come through the speaker and now that the speaker is routed through the sound card it comes out through your main speakers. Now, not every sound card has the PC speaker header, but 
many do so you might have to look around a little bit and look it's not gonna turn the PC speaker sound into something amazing it's quite limited you're much better off having a sound card but there are many games that simply do not support Adlib or Sound Blaster and yeah some games like Golden Axe actually mixes the PC speaker for the sound effects with FM music so here it's very convenient to get the PC speaker sound through your main speakers. If you want to see more videos about sound for MS-DOS I'll put two videos on the screen for you to check out and that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.